So what are some of the recommendations as far as like salt intake would go? Okay, so I saw some studies about like, especially with athletes, like if you look at, maybe we could go from the, the um, spectrum. There's definitely a spectrum in terms of salt needs. Mm -hmm. um, athletes will lose the most salt, obviously. You're sweating the most. If you're actively sweating regularly, uh, they've, they've found that you could lose up to 30 grams of salt a day, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. If you think 30 grams, like weighing that on a scale, you know. That's a pile. <laughs> that's a big old pile of salt. So um, what they found is that, you know, athletes could really heavily supplement with salt. Mm -hmm. to, to, and they need to, to restore that or else the athletic performance suffers. Mm -hmm. uh, the average person, I would say, if you looked at, if you were taking table salt uh, as of, uh, which is basically like a 40% um, ratio of salt or mm -hmm. of sodium in the salt, uh, you basically need somewhere between 10 and 15 grams a day. Mm -hmm. Then um, baking soda is another good way to get sodium. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that has a lower ratio. It's like 22% or 27% uh, sodium. Mm -hmm. So you need more, uh, you know, upwards of over 20 grams a day. If you're mm -hmm. going to have these lower ratios. Yeah. So that's probably like good for the average person. And there, there's research showing that actually uh, the, the myth about swelling to water retention um, being probably, it's probably more accurately what you said about um, excess estrogen causing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's plenty of research showing that water retention actually goes up. It increases with too low of salt levels when you're below um, three to five grams a day mm -hmm. in the average person, they're gonna have more swelling. Uh, and actually it wasn't Zach just talking about this morning with magnesium it being something that like if you don't have enough magnesium, you're gonna swell as well. As little as 200 milligrams a day when supplemented can correct that in a lot of cases. Um, estrogen also causes more vascular permeability, which leads to more um, of the the fluid within the blood leaking into the other tissues, which leads to an increase in swelling and stuff like that too, especially like on the ends of uh, the blood vessels, so like the capillaries and stuff like that, the permeability of those increases tremendously and then you just have a buildup of fluid within that tissue that can't really go anywhere. So the swelling thing is not, it's not true mm -hmm. uh, about salt and eating more salt is actually going to really help with that too, because it, it helps really fuel your glucose metabolism. Mm -hmm. Um, and it has a thermogenic effect by increasing that, that body temperature. Uh, what, what actually, what sodium does is it increases the metabolization of brown fat basically by, you know, increasing the activity of the enzyme that burns brown fat. Mm -hmm. it requires sodium to operate properly mm -hmm. um what happens with that is like people also get benefits in their sleep they mm -hmm. sleep better because it, they're up they're uh increasing the synthesis of gaba they're also decreasing the amount of adrenaline that they have in the system because if you don't have enough sodium in there adrenaline is going to be high cortisol is going to be high aldosterone will be high again mm -hmm. um then you're going to have insomnia because of that adrenaline too well and uh, there's other research showing that um like with, with that increase in GABA by having more sodium there uh, in, the, in the brown fat uh, burning, uh, you get better slow wave sleep. So like deep REM sleep. And that's when you start to really recover. And that's when your body's like d triggering the pulsatile release of growth hormone and uh, all learning and memory consolidation happens in slow wave sleep. Mm -hmm. So um, sodium is you know vital for that whole process to happen. And a lot of people, that are, uh, you know, experiencing insomnia issues. Like if, you, if you're an insomniac, you're never going to get slow wave sleep when you're in that state, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, the aldosterone, the adrenaline, cortisol, they're all high, GABA's low. Uh, it's, you're never going to get into that r deep REM sleep. But um, in, a, in a lot of people, like there might be people listening to this that are kind of in that boat and it's like, you know, how much salt do you eat every day? You should probably increase the the amount of salt that you're eating because it's going to help with that. And one thing I've also noticed just just uh, anecdotally is like when I'm really dialed in thermo with with uh, you know a good amount of salt. Like I'll I throw salt on you know all the stuff I cook, mm -hmm. grass fed beef, eggs, everything. And if I'm also like actively really working on sleeping a lot, mm -hmm. like get in bed early, get some good sleep, I get lean really fast. Like uh, uh, noticeably every morning. You know, you're dropping body fat mm -hmm. and um, sleeping very deeply and restoratively. And if you look at like the sleep cycle app, if you measure that, 
uh, it's pretty cool to see on certain nights, like getting into that deep sleep multiple times throughout the night. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a good effect for it. I'd say, especially if you're in a hypothyroid state, you're not able to hold on to minerals that well or electrolytes. So you need to increase it even further in a lot of cases. Um, and usually with hypothyroid people, you have an excess of estrogen. So, and your progesterone is typically low. So a lot of the swelling that you see in the mornings whenever you're waking up, especially in the face and like the fingers and stuff like that, uh, that's due to that excess estrogen. It's not the salt that's causing that. Yeah, so the moral of the story is eat more salt. Definitely. Stop restricting your salt. It, it not only is like illogical, but it, there's actually really no evidence demonstrating that, that it's gonna be helpful. Um, I just looked at another study here. The, there was a analysis on 78 million Americans. So if you wanna look at like a big study, mm -hmm. there was that and there, the conclusion was that there was no correlation between salt restriction helping these these cardiovascular issues and that there was, again, an inverse relationship in terms of uh, consuming more salt and having better, uh, like the more salt people consume, the better health they had.